Well, I intimidate you to never be able to change the horse's name. At this point, all of my other PCs who've been drinking as well, there are 8 of them in total, begin to take sides. Some on Team Wilbur, some on Team Horse Intimidation. <laughs> Hey, how's everybody? There's no scatter rate, there's no green text, there's no video, there's no like button, there's no subscribe button. Um, goodbye. <laughs> anyway, how are you guys doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day today, I guess. At least I can say that much. Yeah, before jumping into the video, there's no like button, but if you want to smash it, it helps out and I appreciate it. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, maybe you can find the button, I don't know. Uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope you enjoy. Cleric is a team player. Be me. Be in a D&D group. Group is about to fight a big bad. I'm playing a cleric. Big Bad is a dragon. I'm the only one with fire resistance. Everyone else is about to die. I cast resistance on myself. I'm the only one who survives. I'm the hero. <laughs> oh my god, this, these AI generated green texts are really hitting the spot. <laughs> Anon runs Isekai. Biking. Order the court wizard to summon the prophesied chosen one from another world to repel the demonic invasion. He returns with the supposed chosen one, which is some random ass kid from somewhere called Nippon. No archangel or whatever. Well, now what? We just sit there bored as f for 4 more hours as the GM tells us exactly what his special snowflake DMPC does since he clearly already knows what the plot is going to be. At least until one of us gets bored and kills him unceremoniously in the middle of the woods somewhere. We just sit there bored as f for 4 more hours as the GM tells us exactly what his special snowflake DMPC does since he clearly already knows what the plot is going to be. It's an isekai anime campaign, but you're playing the protagonist supporting cast cheer squad. Actually, there'd probably be ways to make that fun depending on how you played it. He must be trained, clearly. The king summons the four bravest adventurers that he knows to protect and instruct the chosen one. He'll need friends and allies, powerful ones, and they can be those allies. There are many things even the chosen one won't be able to do or needs to learn. The chosen one, quote unquote, becomes, in essence, a MacGuffin, one that the party needs to protect against evil for he can't yet protect himself. The party must ascend to his inner circle of heroes so they can stop the demonic invasion together. Well, now I leave the table because Isekai is the <laughs> Anons come across a baker. The awakened cat baker asks your party if they want freshly baked bread for two coppers. I present my hand to the cat so he can smell it and learn that I mean no harm, and then ask him how he likes being pet. What kind of bread you baking, sir cat? Fresh warm bread will go lovely with the butter that we just got earlier. Two coppers, two whole police for a loaf of bread, and they say inflation is only 18%. My <coughs> Fine, wait here. But this better be some really, really good bread. Thanks, but we already ate. Then again, killing monsters is hungry work. We might need a snack later. Here's the silver. That's a lot of bread for one silver. How my party of level 1s cleverly bought out an entire magic shop. Be me, Hubert Homebrew, running my first campaign. Start the very first session. Party starts out in a tavern, which is a classic trope I know, being hired to help an NPC cleric create a cure for a newly arising plague. The NPC cleric offers the party special amulets of constitution that help provide resistance to the plague. Mechanically, this is to explain why they won't catch the plague after only a few sessions. The blood hunter in the group asks for proof of some kind, that these amulets actually work. The cleric can't offer proof other than his word and the fact that the amulets are clearly magical and benefit constitution. The blood hunter asks if the cleric is well known and reputable. Not really sure where they're going with this. I reply that the NPC cleric is moderately known and reputable. Nothing out of the ordinary. Some people know them, most people don't, but they seem trustworthy enough. If only I had known. The player then asks for a signed letter in return. A handwritten and signed letter from the NPC cleric that states what these amulets do and that they work. If this is what they need to equip the amulet and avoid the plague, then fine. I really don't want any of the player characters getting killed early because I was a brand new DM and they were brand new players. NPC cleric handwrites and signs a letter certifying that these amulets provide some, but not all, resistance against this newly developing blood plague. Blood hunter thanks the cleric and the party decides to rest for the night since they all met late in the evening. Tomorrow, in game time, they will leave town and start their adventure. Fast forward to the following afternoon, the group is awake and they're exploring the town. Blood Hunter and a few other player characters are checking out the local quote unquote magic shop, or what passes as one in this small town. What do you have available? They ask. Well, 
I have bracers that can help deflect missile attacks, a ring of tavern and brothel because of player insistence finding, a plus one shortbow which can deal bonus lightning damage and a lamulet that makes you immune to fear. Decent starting items, nothing crazy, but the party comes to find that all of them are out of their price range, at least individually. I don't want them getting too OP too soon, so I made the prices high, but appropriate for their rarity. As a way to entice the players to return after gathering more gold, to buy the items in a future session. The Blood Hunter asks the owner of the magic shop, quote unquote, really just a small vendor stall in the market square, if they have heard of the Blood Plague. I roll a percentile to see if they have, because it's a relatively new thing and not everyone believes what they're told without seeing it firsthand. Dice is high, this guy knows of the Blood Plague and takes it seriously. Yes, I've heard of it, he says. Bloodhunter asks the magic shop owner, would you be interested in buying a magic amulet that can help protect you from the plague? If only I had known. Of course I would, says the magic shop owner, because of course you would. The campaign is built around finding a cure for an incurable plague. Protection from it would be invaluable. Good, because I have proof, says the Bloodhunter, as he hands over the signed letter from a reputable and moderately known cleric. I don't even need to roll. This is my first session and I have no way to price this item that I never considered the party selling. It's meant to protect them from a little plague. I thought they would all equip and attune to them without question. I look online for a quick price estimate and anything close to this would be very expensive. All the magic items combined at this shop aren't worth as much as this amulet. I tell you what, you can have all these magic items that I have in stock as a trade, the magic shop owner says, because what else can I offer them? Deal, says the blood hunter, because of course he would. The level 1 blood hunter scoops up bracers that can help deflect missile attacks, a ring of tavern and brothel finding, a plus 1 shortbow that can deal bonus lightning damage, and an amulet that makes you immune to fear, basically for free. Level 1. Session 1. 4 magic items. Basically for free. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, it would be fair game to kill him from the plague right now, right? Um, because that's what the amulet was supposed to protect him from in the first place. And he really, really should have gotten the idea that it's deadly and, you know, he needs that amulet for protection. Um, yeah, I think it's fair game to kill him. Not necessarily just in-game, but yeah, yeah, I guess that should work too. Drunken D&D debauchery. The gang names a horse. Be me. DM. Be not me. 8 intoxicated PCs. Setting, just beat a bunch of bandits and rescued 20 plus horses that were stolen from Neverwinter. TLDR, the gang names a horse. PC1 had slain a bandit that was in horseback and mounted the horse mid-combat, finishing the encounter on horseback and as such they were curious as to their horse's name. PC1, drunk. What's the horse's name? Whatever you want it to be, I respond, slightly confused by the question. Well, I wanna roll to find out what its name is. Uh, okay, well let me roll a d100. I immediately fudge a roll because I thought using the TV show Mr. Ed as inspiration would be funny. His name is Wilbur. PC2 also drunk. I don't want his name to be Wilbur. Too late, his name is Wilbur. Well, can I roll to intimidate the horse into making its name something else? What? Intimidate the horse? I ask? Yes, um, okay. What name are you trying to intimidate this horse into thinking it has? I don't know, just any name that isn't Wilbur? Okay, roll for intimidation. I just immediately set the DC to 30, because what the f*** is this guy even asking for? PC2 rolls a 12. You grab the horse by the reins and begin screaming in its face. Not Wilbur! Not Wilbur! The horse is clearly disturbed by this, because up until around 20 minutes ago, it's never even had a name. Its name was just Riding Horse that had been stolen by bandits from the horse pens near Neverwinter. Now I'm pretty proud of myself at this point, because I think we solved the problem and we can get to the main part of the quest, which is to rescue 20 plus horses and herd them back to Neverwinter. Oh yeah, there were 20 more horses that could have been named anything. Anyways, I thought we were over the horse pit, until PC1 pipes up again, full of liquid courage. Well, I intimidate you to never be able to change the horse's name. At this point, all of my other PCs who've been drinking as well, there are 8 of them in total, begin to take sides. Some on Team Wilbur, some on Team Horse Intimidation. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, this is amazing so far. Okay, pause. PC1, roll Intimidation to set the DC for PC2 to have to beat in order to get the naming rights for the horse. PC1 rolls an 18 with modifier. Beat that, his name is Wilbur. PC2, Natural 20s. 
chaos ensues. I want his name to be Gary. So you wanna name the horse Gary. Okay, his name is Gary now. Sorry, PC1. No, I want his name to be Gary. Like, I intimidate the horse into thinking its name is actually Gary. Okay, so that's kind of not how any of this works. But you're drunk and you're all the natural 20, so f*** it. So, once again, PC2, with a slightly more focused and intensive approach this time, grabs the horse by the reins and stares deeply into its eyes. And with a thunderous and booming voice, screams Gary into the horse's face. The horse rears back, frightened by the startling revelation that he is indeed named Gary. And in fact, his name has always been Gary. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Fuck yeah. The party rescues the horses and brings them back to Neverwinter, where the NPC is waiting to pay them 70 gold pieces per horse returned. The party, all of whom enjoy gold, return all of their horses, including Gary. I told them that they could purchase Gary or just keep him. Nope. Sell that b <gasps> We're buying mules because they're only 8 gold pieces and horses cost 75. Okay, so you traumatize the <gasps> of a horse and then make it feel like a welcome member of your party and then immediately abandon it. Noted. So uh, yeah, drunk PCs can be fun, but be prepared for shenanigans. Dude, <laughs> the betrayal in the end. They didn't, uh, PC2 didn't, didn't give a <gasps> about Gary as, as a horse itself. It just wanted to have him named Gary. <laughs> or just wanted him to not be named Wilbur, I guess. I call for crits. Be me, DM. At the fair with the boys. And the grills and everybody else were there too. Spent three days doing several sessions of different TTRPGs. Mostly newbies coming to try games and have easygoing sessions. So far so good. Nice players and nice games. Finally, comes the time for the very last session. It's 5th editioning time. 6 level 1 players and most of them already know how to play. This will be easy and short as long as anybody doesn't do anything stupid. The first and only fight of the adventure comes in and the paladin rushes behind enemy lines. I'm gonna stay here so we get advantage by surrounding them. It's an optional rule that I hate my guts out of for several reasons. He also triggers an opportunity attack from the spine devil in the middle of the room. I linger over my DM screen, keep eye contact with him and utter foolish paladin, witness me crit. Based die goes natural 20. My face when. The paladin didn't outright die thanks to his goliath skill. I haven't stopped laughing in two days. <laughs> Absolutely deserved. Baiting the monk into a dirty joke. On a discussion about the value of pants. Lizard folk druid. Well, fortunately, I don't need pants. Bard. Probably makes it easier to swing your majestic wood around. Monk. Wait, don't lizard folk have a cloak or something? I'm talking about his shillelagh. What are you talking about? Frustrated monk noises <laughs> from the monk. All right, on that note, that's gonna be it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like if you did and subscribe for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for that. Links below if you wanna check those out as well as links to the social media, Discord server, and everything else. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.